So the first thing under the practice of metta here is that strength and size. Why is this important? Go back to the story of the snake. Why this is important? Buddha asks us to practice metta by having an understanding about the size of the animals and beings. See, let's go to the verse number four. Ye ke chipana bhutati tasava tavarava nevasesa digavai mahantava majjimara sakano. What are the beings over here? Tasava, weak, tavarava, strong, diga means long, mahanta means big or large, majjima means medium size, rasa means uh, small, uh, kanukatula means subtle or gross. Why do we have to think about these bodily specifications of other animals, beings? Why? Now, now don't you get this point? Isn't it clear that Buddha asks us to particularly understand who are out there for us to practice metta? That means a good understanding about our environment is a key to this practice. That's why he says, weak, strong, long, short, big, big, medium size, small, subtle, gross. So I would tell you in your metta practice, you have to have a good understanding about the strength of these other beings and the size. Number two, other manifestations, visibility, distance, rebirth seeking, verse number five. Those visible or invisible, uh, that means there are some animals, some beings you can see, you cannot see. Even the ghost, even the deva, we don't see them. So anybody of them. Then residing near or far, that means distance. Then here we understand Bhutava Sambhavesi. Sambhavesi means beings who passed away here dead but going to look for another life. Sambhavesi. We have to bring our metta to all those beings depending on visibility, distance, rebirth seeking. Third, deception, ill will, anger and harm. Ah, the Buddha said these are blind spots. These are failures in our metta practice. For whatever the reason you come up with any harm, doing any harm to other people, anger to other people, ill will to other people, want to deceive other people, cheat on other people, they are really what you call impediments to your practice of metta. Do we normally come up with any uh, cheating thoughts? In today's world do many people cheat on other people? Yes. Why people are cheating if the world is so developed? Why is it? Ah, greed. Ah, this is the fundamental issue. Is it only the greed that they uh, prompt them to cheat? Is it only, the, only that reason. Are there other reasons too? Maybe revenge. That means a delusion. Somebody did something wrong. I want to do the same thing to that person. It also come out of delusion. And what are the other reasons why people still want to cheat? Greed is the fundamental one. Discontent. Discontent. Uh, that means instant gratification. Discontent is what we already Yeah, yeah. Because, because that means they may have access to a certain instant gratification or they, maybe they are not happy with whatever they have. But in Buddhism, happiness, material happiness has to be seen with a commitment. That's what the Buddha said in the Kama Sumitya Chara. All right. So then uh, nature of metta, verse number seven, you can see it is about uh, what you call, uh, I think the boundless, just as a mother would protect her only child with her own life, even so let him cultivate boundless thoughts. I think this was the theme of this uh, event. That means uh, how you are supposed to practice. That means how do we need to practice metta? just as a mother would protect her only child. That means in our metta practice, we cannot, we cannot practice metta in a selfish way. We have to take this mother's example in a, an altruistic way. Because some people get this wrong understanding. Why do I practice metta to me first? Because I had to practice more metta to me <laughs> and then to less metta to other people. No, you practice metta to you you understand how much you love yourself and then you are giving the same love to other people. That's the nature of the metta. Number eight, direction of metta practice. See, uh, to the whole world, above, below, all around, unobstructed, free from hatred and enmity. Direction, huh? 
6. Metta as the best attitude mood in daily life. I think I need to emphasize this verse number 9. Very interesting. Tittang charang nisin nova saya nova yavatasa vikatamitu etang satting aditeye brahma metang viharang idamahu. Metta is the highest attitude in Buddhism. That means whatever you do in your life, whether you are cooking, you are walking, you are talking to somebody, you are cleaning the house, uh, you are doing other chores, keep metta all along. That is the best attitude. right? Uh, because if you miss that, uh, that means you are exiting from the highest attitude. You can see here, Brahma metang. Tittang means whether you are standing, Charam means whether you are walking, Nisinno means whether you are seated, Sayanova means whether you are lying down, Yavatasa Vikatamiddu, as long as you are awake, Etang Satin Aditi, you should develop this mindfulness. Actually, this is the right mindfulness, Metta. Right? And then Brahma Metang, highest, highest attitude. What, what could be our attitude on a daily life? What is our daily attitude? from uh, the moment we woke up in the morning. Huh? Is it always uh, metta? I mean, just, just be honest with us. What is the attitude that we are waking up in the morning? Maybe you may have seen a bad dream. Let's forget about it. You wake up. What is the immediate thing that comes to your mind? Huh? I want to go back to sleep. <laughs> go back to sleep. <laughs> go back to sleep. And then? Hungry, hungry. Yeah, it is metta also, right? Self care. <laughs> See, because because a lot of arguments start when people are hungry. Right? Yes. When you are hungry, a lot of arguments start. You need something. That's why when somebody came to the temple, the Buddha said, uh, Have you eaten? I said, No. He asked, Monk, take him to the kitchen. Give some food to him. He was okay <laughs> after that. And then? There are a lot of things. I think it is not metta. So we have to start the day with metta. It means, who am I going to support today? But some people say, who am I going to destroy today? <laughs> yes. Some people start so. Today I think I want to break that people connection. Such a bad way of doing that, right? We have to wake up. We have to start the day by thinking how to help other people. How are we going to be supportive? Last ten, uh, part. The final goal of metta practice, uh, where do we lead our metta practice? Very interesting. Let us take a look at the last tense. Dittencha anupagamma silava dasanena sampanno kamesu vineya gedang nahijatu gappa seyam punaitivi. What is it? Dittencha anupagamma silava. Do not create views. Why? Every time we have a view, we are struggling. We are conflicting with other people. Let us have a healthy view about us and other people, where we do not have lots of issues. Dasanena sampanno. We should have, what is this dasanena mean? Dasanena means sotapatti, sotapatti, becoming a stream. When you have the sotapanna level, you have the dasana. Kamesu vineya gedhang. What does it say? We have to abandon the greed for the karma. We may attach, we may have likes to come, but not the greed. Are you normally looking for certain food every day? Today I will go to this restaurant, I am going to eat uh, Indian food. Are you like that? Everybody is. Some people are like that. It is normal, pretty normal. But if you think, if I cannot fill myself with this kind of food today, if I have too much greed for the food, too much greed for whatever the stuff, that is bad. And then finally, nahi jatu gabba seyam punaritiri. Our expectation is one day not coming to another womb. That is a higher teaching, higher practice of the metta. That means not to be uh, reborn again. Yeah. So this is the final. So I would say, metta sutta has two aspects. The first is 15 skillful habits. Second is unlimited, unconditional practice of metta. You have to see the seven layers. You could see differences here. What are the differences? You may have never seen, heard. We should see strength, size, 
visibility, distance, other manifestations, how our metro practice can be developed, trained within us. That is how we are going to practice metta. It is not just by doing a normal sitting meditation you can practice. It is it's a, it's a very, uh, I would say, very structured practice. It is structured when you look at these ideas.